Ladies and gentlemen, on my YouTube channel, you are likely to encounter a wide range of incredible chess games. Sometimes at the lower end, they are played by two and three hundreds, creating some beautiful adventures on the board. And at the highest level, they are played not just by the world champions, but also by computers. Now, today's game uh, is set in Banyu in 1973 in France. And the players involved are Emile Joseph uh, Diemer uh, and Fro Tromsdorf. Now, Diemer, uh, very strong player, uh, very kind of crazy guy uh, in history. Uh, doctors told him to stop playing chess, actually, because he kind of went a little bit nuts. And also, he was a Nazi sympathizer. He was the chess editor for the Third Reich. Um, and his name, also, the Black Mark Diemer Gambit. But, now, that stuff I don't like very much. But what I do like very much is uh, this game featuring an absolutely insane fight and one of the most insane moves I've ever seen in my life. So here we go. D4. Now... Uh, Diemer played the Blackmar Diemer Gambit, or what he probably thought was just the Diemer Gambit with e4. So his opponent plays knight to f6. We have knight c3 looking to take control of the center of the board, and obviously if d5, well then we're going to get e4. Uh, g6, and now the game becomes a Peard's Defense. Now I don't know if in 1973 it was known as the Peard's Defense, it might have been known as something else, but basically Black wants to play bishop g7. Uh, and here, Diemer once again finds a way to play very interesting chess. He plays bishop to e2. I've seen this line before, and the idea of this line is to play the move g4. Uh, it's not to just develop like a normal person, or maybe play f4, and Diemer was certainly not a normal person, so he plays g4. This is actually very good to try to play g5, and black has to be very accurate. If I'm not mistaken, there's many lines where black actually has to play a move like queen a5 very early, pinning the knight and trying to take this pawn because it no longer has a defender. Uh, in this game, though, Tromsdorf played the move b5, looking to create queenside counterplay with his pawns, but this is a bit slow because after g5, your knight gets kicked out of the center, and it's worse than that. I am following up with a haymaker, h4. I mean, like, we're, we're in business here with h4, h5 coming. This is, this is like a way to play. I mean, this is not bad at all. This is not a madman versus a guy who's never played chess before. This is a madman versus a guy who has played chess before. The madman's got a good position in the opening, though. B4, he just brings the knight right back. Why? Because the knight is going to be better toward the center than out here on the edge of the board. So D5 tries to create some havoc uh, in the center of the board. And here it would have been better for Diemer actually not to deal with this and just to play h5. And here's why. Because, for example, uh, if you just play a move like bishop g7, uh, then I kick your bishop back and you're just terribly lacking in space. This is really, really bad. If you take my center pawn, I take this. You can't take because you'd lose your rook. You go here and this is just very ugly. Your king is really weak. So h5 would have been good, but instead of that, Diemer plays e5. Again, he's still going for the suffocating the opponent approach with chess pieces. Um, e6, now h5, the attack continues, black plays the move c5, looking to create a little counterplay, we get takes, takes, and bishop d3. There is a very nasty little trap associated with bishop d3, uh, and it's the fact that you want to take on g6, hg, oh, hg6, and take the rook. However, this move is necessary, but still succumbs to a nasty tactic, but a tactic that really sends the game for a spin. White cannot take on g6 any longer because the rook is protected, but white detonates the second idea of the bishop-rook combo. Rook h7, you have to take, otherwise I destroy everything. And now I take with check, and now you are down two pawns. However, even though you are two pawns down, your attack has been extinguished. The only thing that you have left is a bishop. I'm about to take on d4, then take on e5, then develop all of my pieces, and actually I'm very happy, and my king will evacuate this way, and I'm completely safe. So black plays c takes on d4, and here, again, a move that stabilizes the center. He does not want to take back right away. Patience, f4. Diemer glues together the pawn structure, so the dark squared bishop for black, and the knight on d7 have nowhere to really go. Black plays queen, h8, a natural move. Now, white can play g6 and glue in this bishop, but that's a little bit depressing, okay? Like, that's, you know, it's like moving into a home and closing all the blinds forever. Like, let's not do that. Queen h5, black plays bishop a6, just developing a bishop, nothing complicated. White develops a knight, black develops a knight. I wish all of chess could be solved with just me explaining things in five sec, five uh, sentences, not sentences, five words. English is a difficult language. Now, here, Diemer plays the move knight h4 uh, because the king is stuck in the center and you have ideas to just very cleanly play the move knight to g6. Uh, so black plays knight f8. Black is also a logical individual. This bishop has some problems. This queen 
Um, you know, you could play bishop g6 here, and if knight takes, of course, knight takes. If queen takes, then this. But Deemer uh, just plays g6. Uh, he's like, look, uh, you can take my bishop, and if you take my bishop, of course, I'm going to take. Play knight g6, and you resign. So g6, great. Black does not want to have any check in this situation. So in the middle of a game where they have five pawns, two knights, two bishops, queen, and rook, Black moves the king out of danger. This move has two ideas. First idea is that anything landing on g6 will no longer be a check. The second idea is that knight to e7 is possible. And there's also a third idea. The third idea is to run the king over here. I'm not even joking. That's actually a potential idea. White develops with knight d2. Black evacuates the king. Knight f3 and knight d7. So the knight has kind of done its job forcing these pieces to get locked in. Now knight c6, knight d7, bishop d2. And black turns the attention toward the potential f-pawn or potentially something on the queen side. Computer here, despite white's one pawn material advantage, gives the position 0, 0, 0, but the computer is probably a little bit high. So we'll just excuse the computer. Now here, Deemer played knight to g5. This is a very natural move attacking this pawn. Black defended it, and white restocked the ammunition to try to attack the e6 pawn. But uh, Tromsdorf, you see, was very familiar with the YouTube video Danger Levels, the, the concept, one could say. Uh, 48 years into the future, you see that Tromsdorf is a time traveler. Uh, and Tromsdorf understands that what's worth more than a pawn? A queen. A queen is worth more than a pawn. And here explodes with knight takes e5. Now, oftentimes when you have like five or six pieces ready to burst, and one little thing closes them down, sometimes you can sacrifice one of those pieces. Knight takes e5 is a fantastic move. Here's the problem. If you take it, it's made. So, yeah, right? So, so that's just the problem. And if knight takes e6, uh, then black actually just moves the king. Remember I told you about that plan of evacuating the king to b6? I wasn't joking. That actually is the plan. So, uh, Deemer must have thought, or blundered this, but, you know, must have thought that after queen h3, he still has knight e6, he covers mate, and this is now a threat because he's covering mate. So black obviously comes forward, uh, striking on d2. Uh, here, knight takes e6 is played, and black plays a fascinating move. Black has one, two, three, four, five, six moves with the king, uh, and plays one of the worst ones, uh, and uh, plays, uh, plays this move. Although, logically, it looks pretty good, because you just pressure this knight. Remember, this, this knight can't move, because there's a pin over there. So white's next move is forced. You have to defend your knight. And here, uh, Tromsdorf has a, a few different moves possible. The machine gives queen f6 as the only move for advantage. A little bit hard to understand that move, but probably the idea is to play d3, when the queen and the bishop will just destroy on b2 and, and rip apart the queen side. However, he took on d2, and that actually also looks pretty smart, because it seems like white is going to take back, and then you will probably hit with the bishop and play queen f6. But here is where this game goes absolutely, completely, supremely off the rails. I hope you're ready. Okay, that was a little eight minutes of introduction. Here we go. Now we're going to have the main event. Knight takes d2. King d2 did not happen. Long castles. That move is legal. You see, a king cannot castle through check, right? But none of these moves are check. The rook can castle through danger. So sometimes when a knight is near a king like this, you can actually still castle. So now white is going to probably take this with the rook. Now here's the thing. If black says, ah, 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 you had a chance to take my knight, you can't take it anymore. There's a queen hanging, folks. There is a queen hanging. And the queen hanging is possible because now you're unpinned. You see? You got to keep in mind what's important here. What, like, what's what? Why we castled? We got the queen out of the way. So now black plays queen f6. And here, still, we can take on d2. But if we take on d2, there's all this bishop h6 stuff and d3, as I mentioned. So first, we need to get rid of the bishop. Now, if just queen g7, we take, we take this knight at some point. But actually, there's still this. So f6 wins the game for white. That's just check. Boom. That's not good. So the only move here for black, now at this point, black plays a couple of very accurate moves. The only move here for black is this incredible move, rook to e3. 
Knight is hanging, Knight is hanging. This bishop is locked away over there. You know, the tallest room in the tallest tower or whatever it is, just locked away on h7. You go for the queen. Here's why. Because anywhere the queen moves, like g2 or h2 or h1 or g4, uh, there are certain problems. Like, for example, you'll bring this knight back. And then uh, now that the rook is more active, it's no longer in the line of getting captured. Uh, you always have queen g5 ideas to create an attack. You have knight f2 ideas. Just an absolutely insane position. Just take my word for it. If this position gives you a headache, yeah, I get it. So instead, Deemer also proves that he has seen the danger levels concept 48 years into the future and plays this move. What's worth, what's worth a, as much as a queen? A queen. Queen's worth as much as a queen. Black here plays a move, getting the queen out of danger, pressuring everybody, and in the future, there's an eyeing of this king. Okay, and here, we get two insane moves. The first one is this absurd move, queen to g4. The point of that move is that you're forced to take right because now there's a fork and i win the queen back and the reason that this position is simply winning for white is I mean, you have two pawns about to become queens <laughs> like it's and the knight is hanging and the rook is hanging it's all completely lost if you don't take if you just step away while well, the knight is hanging i mean you know in in some lines not right away but i, I hello right that's the problem and ladies and gentlemen this is where black plays the craziest move i've ever seen in my life I, I've probably I've played half a million chess games. I've probably watched. I, I mean, I don't know. The numbers are insane. This is I am proud to say the craziest move I've ever seen. Black here plays, and you feel free to pause and try to find it. Black plays the move b3. That's it, Levy. I don't just a pawn. Hold on. You're about to appreciate what this is. All right, it's like the truffle ingredient in cooking. Right? Isn't that like a very high-end... I don't know. It's like a, one of those ingredients. Very hard to source. Okay. B3. What's so special about this move? Well, if you take the queen, right, which we... Then this, and you, you can't stop this. Yes, you can. No, because rook and bishop, check. You can't go up, so you have to come back. And now, of course, you get BM'd. Rook mate. What? Wait, so you can't take the queen. Okay, we can't take the queen. Fine. What if we take the pawn? All right, what if we play a takes b3? Now, that's what happened in the game. We will look at that. First, what if you take with the c pawn? If c takes b3, then there would be knight takes b3. Check. So obviously nothing can happen with the queens. Anywhere you move the king, you will get mated very promptly. You will get mated with a combination of the bishop and the knight. If you take... Then here there is double check. You go here. There is now bishop d3. You cannot take it because I come in with my queen and my knight. So you run. So check. So here. And rook c6 with the threat of rook a6 and knight c2 combination. And at any moment I can come back with my queen. You are dead lost. Mate in five, mate in six, mate in three. Choose your poison. Now, after the move b3, there is also the move a3. And this leads to the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. Here there is the move rook c3. Now the threat of rook c3 is rook c2 mate. So naturally, what if you take the rook? Then black just takes and b2 is mate. Pawn to b2 you're like okay well that's obvious if rook takes knight the queen comes in that's bad what if i take this bishop to d3 and you cannot stop knight takes pawn checkmate if you play a rook move like for example to give defense to your queen and provide king d1 it doesn't matter check here mate or mate or c2 and c1 Ladies and gentlemen, I want to draw your attention once again to that. Rook to c3, here, 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 here. Are you... What? What? And last but not least, a takes b3, a takes b3. Knight, to b f knight takes b3 was played in the game, and it does win. There is also knight to b4. What? 
Well, here's the point. If queen takes g5, knight a2, here mate. Knight b4 is winning. Knight takes b3, check is also winning. King moves to b1. And now rook to d3. Now what's funny about this game is that here, if black had played instead of rook d3, repeated moves. You say, how does that make sense? Well, how? well, here's the thing. You got rid of the b3 pawn, right? So there, there used to be a pawn there. Now knight b4 is winning once again. It's the winning idea. You have this knight b4 move. You sack your queen. Anything that gets taken, you get crushed down the middle. And there's the threat of knight a2, king d2, rook e2. In the game, we got rook to d3. So now there is a hanging queen, another hanging queen, a hanging rook, and a hanging knight. And this is, right, the only move here, queen to g1. Back up, I'm sorry. Not the only move, but what I meant to say is you, you need to uh, deal with you know, rook d1, your queen. And it's the only move that looks like it makes any sense because you get your queen out of the way, you guard the rook, you guard the back rank, maybe queen c1. Now, in this position, we have 0.00. .00. Queen g1, which does look like the only move that guards everything, is mate in 10 for black. Black now, once again, needs to give this check and successfully does so. King to a1. Now, there are a lot of ways to win this game. Knight to b4 is still one of them. The queen escapes. The queen escapes and is on the way to a5. This king is about to face the wrath of a knight, a rook, a knight, a bishop, and a queen. Now, I'm not very good at math, but I'm pretty sure that's 23 to nothing. All right, so what do you do? Knight to f6 check. Now you start getting creative. You got to go for the king. You got to go for the king. That's what you got to do. Queen f6 is playable, but that deflects the queen away. So king to c8 runs away. Now rook takes d2. Okay, we got rid of one of the knights. If you take this, which looks pretty nat nor natural, g7. Don't forget white is about to make a second queen. So black has to be, uh, be quick. Queen a5 check. Only move is this. Now, you have an option. Take the rook or play knight to b4. Knight to b4. Best move. Queen a2 is on the way. Rook takes d3. White is trying to escape. Now, black is left with three pieces, but it's still forced mate. Check here. What do you do? Do you play queen a1 and take, or do you play knight takes d3? Queen a1, king d2, and queen takes g1 is minus 15 for black. Probably black got a little bit scared of a pawn promoting or something and chose to instead throw in knight takes d3. The problem with this move is I don't need to take and lose my queen. I can go here. Now you are not getting my queen. And now we're black. We're, we're black. We're black to plus five. We're back to plus five. It's plus five for white. Queen a5. King e2. Knight e5. King f2. Queen d2. This king is being hunted down. Now, if we just instant replay that real quick, queen a5 check. In this position was white's final attempt to survive with the king, the move c3. This survives because after d takes c3, you play bc3 and you get away to e3. Now, because white played this move, check here, check here, and there's no escape. Your escape is taken away, queen g5, King here, and the players repeat moves for a draw. Now listen, I understand that you might be out for blood with a game like this. And trust me, when both players are on the verge of defeat, we definitely want somebody to lose. But I'm not going to lie to you folks. Queen g4, b3 is one of the most savage things I have ever seen in my life. And I wanted to share it with you as we continue our tradition of you all sending me various games. I've never seen this game ever. So thank you to the individual who sent it to me. Um, incredible stuff. B3 is the most savage move I've ever seen until perhaps a future game of one of my viewers. As always, take care. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Get out of here.